To start, I interpret the problem statement. The goal is pressure, and this is at the center of the pipe. So we're looking for pressure right here. I see that I have a manometer, and this manometer has three fluids, water, oil, and mercury. Dimensions are given, and also values of specific gravity for the various fluids are given. Visualize means to picture the problem as it exists in the real world. I see water flowing through a pipe. Pressure in this water pushes water up the manometer tube. The water pushes on oil, which pushes on mercury, which then pushes on this water column and this water column is open to ambient, so the pressure right here is zero gauge. I define the situation by describing the problem and sketching a system diagram. Notice that I use color to distinguish the three fluids, water, oil, and mercury. I write down KPA gauge because a manometer measures gauge pressure, not absolute pressure. And this means I'm looking for the pressure at the center line of the pipe, which is at point A. No surprise, to solve this problem, I'm going to apply the manometer equation, which I've written here. To begin, I want to label a point 1 and point 2 corresponding to these two points. So here's point 1 and here's point 2. Let me expand my drawing and show you how to use this equation. Okay, you start with the pressure here at point 1, then you add the pressure change to move down here to this point. So that pressure change is this elevation distance, 90 centimeters, times the specific weight of water. So you have gamma water times 0.9 meters. Then you move down to this elevation and add the pressure change from here to here. And so that pressure change is gamma mercury times this distance, which is 60 centimeters or 0.6 meters. Then you move across to this point, and you recognize the pressures the same on the mercury side and the oil side of the interface. So then you move upward to this elevation, and now we're going to go up in the fluid, so we subtract pressure. So we say minus gamma of the oil, since we're in the oil, and then we take this distance, which is 150 centimeters um, plus 30 centimeters, so uh, that's 180 centimeters or 1.8 meters. So gamma oil, 1.8 meters, we're moving upward, so we subtract that term. Then we move across, we do the same thing at the interface, the pressure is constant across the interface, and we move downward from this point to point 2. So we add a term of gamma water times this distance, which is 1.5 meters, and that will give us the pressure at 2. Let me go ahead and write the equation out and show you what that looks like. Here's the final equation, and so P1 is right there, and there's some down terms for moving downward in the manometer, and there's one of them there down in the water, there's another one down in the mercury, and there's a third one down in the water, and there's one up term where we moved upward in the mo um, manometer, and that's in the oil term, and that term's right there. Let's do term-by-term -term analysis. There's the goal, the pressure at 2. The pressure at 1 is 0 gauge because it's open to atmosphere. Specific weight of water is known. Specific weight of mercury is known. Specific weight of oil is known. So that's known. So I have one equation, one unknown. So my plan is to calculate values of specific weight and then to calculate the pressure at 2. To execute my plan, I found values of specific weight. I looked up the specific weight of water at 10 degrees C and found it had this value. I looked this up in table 8.5 in the back of the book. To calculate um, specific weights of the other fluids, I need to find the specific weight of water at 4 degrees C because this is in the definition of specific gravity. So I looked this up too and found it had the same numerical value and I looked this up in table F.6. So the specific weight of mercury 
came out to be that value, the specific weight of oil, right here. To calculate the pressure at 2, I rearranged the equation I previously developed, and in particular I put the H2O terms together right here. Then I put numbers into the equation, carried and canceled units as always, and the final answer, the pressure at 2, which is the pressure at A, is 89.5 kilopascals, and that's a gauge pressure. As always, I conclude by reviewing the solution. I note that the final pressure is about 9 tenths of an atmosphere, and this is above local ambient pressure. To use the manometer equation, there's only two ideas you need to know. Anytime you move down in the manometer, add gamma delta Z terms. Anytime you move upward in the manometer, subtract these gamma delta Z terms. I hope you found this solution useful. Thank you very much for listening.